So do you think you're fit? Do you think you're fit? Get through the wing. <laughs> no, I like the back. I feel like a problem. Episode five, you're still watching, which means you really like us or you're hate watching either way. Uh, so you think you're fit. Episode five, we are here with Cody Jarrett of Expedition Strength. Um, we're here to do some kettlebell training. So Cody, just tell us about Expedition Strength. Tell us how I got started. All right. So um, I spent the first decade of my career working in public education. I worked as a teacher for five years and as an administrator for five years. And I realized during all that time, my hobby, all of my free time, all of my interests and pursuits always involved strength and conditioning. So the past decade I've spent working with students in education, and I'm transitioning in my life now where I feel like I've, uh, I have flattened out the learning curve, and I've learned a thing or two along the way, and I'd like to continue to work with students, but in a different capacity. Uh, via teaching them about strength and conditioning. You know, I personally feel like I had a very steep learning curve because I tried to do everything myself. Once I actually hired a coach, my abilities, my knowledge increased exponentially, and I'm at the point in my life where I want to do that for others now. Cool. Why kettlebell training, and, and what are some of the health benefits that you've seen? Well, um, most of my fitness career was more of the gym bro barbell stuff, which is awesome and I still love doing. But I just personally, I, I got bored with it. I really did. Um, I just haphazardly picked up a kettlebell one day, and I was like, man, this is really hard. And I was humbled. I was really humbled. Um, and ever since then, I've kept with kettlebells because they are, I find them to be challenging and difficult. There's a certain level of skill that's involved for some of the more complex kettlebell lifts. And I treat my workouts now more like practice. So that's the aspect that I personally enjoy. Because in reality, when it comes to health and fitness, unless you are pursuing like very specific goals, uh, almost everything works. I, I really do believe that, that it doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you pick something you enjoy doing and do it most days of the week, for most weeks of the year, for all of the years, you're probably gonna be pretty fit and healthy. Um, I prefer swinging around big balls of iron. That's just my jam. I love it. All right, so what should we expect from, from a class with, with Cody? What should we expect today? Store hamstrings. Okay. Store hamstrings. <laughs> I am ready. Uh, and if people want, you know, you watch this and you want to learn more, how do they get in contact with you? Uh, you can find me online just by uh, Google searching Expedition Strength. My personal email address is Cody at expeditionstrength.training. You can follow me on social media. I'm at Cody Jarrett 42. So we're going to approach our kettlebell in an athletic stance. For most people, this will be very similar to their squat stance. Now, the most common mistake I see with a kettlebell swing is people thinking it is a squatting movement. This is a hinge movement. You know, you know, throughout society, it's always lift with your legs, not your back. So most people will squat down like this and try to do a kettlebell swing. That's not what we are doing. We are going to hinge from the hips. So what I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to shoot my back, my butt towards the wall behind me, hinging from the hips, minimal bend in the knees. I'm going to reach out, I'm going to grab the kettlebell. Now in an effort to keep my back straight, I'm going to pretend you're not actually going to do this. I'm going to try to break this handle in half. What that does is it tightens up my lats, puts me in a nice safe position. So here we go. I'm down here. I have some air in my belly. I'm nice and tight. And I'm just going to contract my lats to swing the kettlebell back. All right. Athletic stance. Soft knees. Oh, Hinge. Lord. Hamstring. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Tight here we lats. go. Oh, God. All Don't right. forget. My hamstrings are really tight. Yeah. So butt back, hips back. There. Okay. Oh. So, Cora, I would encourage you oh. to step back a little bit. Okay. But, Cody, my hamstrings are done. Allow the kettlebell to angle some. So, you kind of always want to pretend um, if you were to let go of that kettlebell, you would fall backwards. So, you have to find that balance point. Okay. So, it's not quite that much. So, I want you to be explosive when you hike it back. Much better. Okay. okay. There we go. And then put it Do back on the ground. Right put it right down. Good. When you said don't bend your knees, I was like, Oh. Soft knees, soft knees. So the whole time I'm like. <laughs> yeah, you you are you are. Kettlebell squats are awesome. I am a I am a squatty you're a squat, bendy. <laughs> you're a squat swinger. I've seen it. Nice, 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 fast. Okay. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Way better than Corey's first attempt. Oh. Say that one more time. Way better than Corey's first attempt. 
music to my ears. All right, excellent. So that again is the hardest rep of the kettlebell swing. It's one of the, it's kind of a rhythmic movement. So once yeah. you actually get underway, uh, reps two, three, four, five, and rep eighty nine is a lot easier than that oh, first rep. Eighty nine. So what we're do now is we are going to combine that and actually do the explosive part of the movement. So Corey, I'm gonna work on this one right here. All right. I'm down here. I'm hinged from the hips. My butt is facing the wall behind me. I am not squatting. Reach out in front of me, breaking the handle in half, and here we go. Take a nice breath. Very nice, I feel like you guys have done swings before. So instead of, this is a nice, fun movement, as fast as you can. Like my feet almost leave the ground. I'm exploding so heavy. And explode. And explode. Very nice. Everything in my elbows and hips just popped. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I could see the speed that kettlebell was traveling out was significantly faster. So you, okay. you know, if I had a way to measure power output, I'm willing to bet that last set of five you just did was significantly more powerful than that first set. But not as powerful as my set. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's oh. complicate the movement a little bit. Okay. Yes. Let's okay. do it one-handed. Oh dear. So. The weight truly doesn't matter because ultimately all of the power still comes from the hips and the hamstrings. Whether you are doing it two-handed, whether you're doing it one-handed, or if you're doing two kettlebells with one hand, all the power comes from the same area. The difference is in the stability and the torso. So if you were to grab a heavy kettlebell and start doing one-handed swings, do not be surprised if you feel in your core a little bit because that weight naturally wants to twist you. It is your job to resist it getting in my stance. This lat is contracted. Now, quite a few people don't know what to do with this arm. I personally prefer letting it follow the kettlebell. So I'll start with this arm up here. When I'm back here, this hand will also be back here. And it's kind of like running. I will use it to help propel me forward. So your off hand follows the bell. One thing that, um, Behind treating the kettlebell swing as a squat, another thing I see a lot with people is that they will start to hinge too soon. That puts a lot of strain on the back. I, um, we call it playing chicken in the kettlebell world. So when you're out here at the top of your swing, let's say it's a two-hand swing, I want you to wait as long as possible before actually hinging. Most people are like, oh, hey, I'm up here. I'm going to start hinging. That's a lot of torsion on the low back right there versus I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Pretend there are two buttons right on the creases of your hips. Come in, 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 wait. And then I'm going to drop it to my hinge. Play chicken? I'll say, oh. There you go, that's better. All the mechanics still apply, there just can be a significant balance component. Here we go. like that you got that you got that round back going Gosh. all right here we go so engage our lats wait let me just like oh god okay so your ally here will be explosive power okay the faster you move it the faster it's over oh okay oh you got know, that physics. Got that, okay. Okay, so. It's low. It's low. Very nice, very good. Oh, you got this. Okay. Well Ooh! Very nice, very good, all in one. Okay. Oh. That, that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. Oh, I am really tired. <laughs> that was okay. only five reps. So, you guys want to try to do uh, 100 swings in five minutes? Yeah. Let's get some cardio in. 100 swings. This is. Yeah, that's what we came here for. 100 swings, that's you a good. lot. Are you guys doing two-handed or one-handed? Oh, two. Two. <laughs> I recommend that. Yeah. Two. I recommend that. <clears throat> All right, here we go. We got the five-second countdown, and let's do this. Godspeed. Quick, don't
can't touch the be with you. Oh, I just got inside. <laughs> Let's reset. Let's reset. <laughs> Telling me, telling me, don't touch the kettlebell yet. If you're this, going down, I heard the sound. This is your first, right, it's so your first time. My mistake, five second count. Now here we go. Oh, that's not your mistake. Someone just isn't with the program. Right. Three, two, one. Let's do it. No! I'm a game. I'm powerful. <laughs> oh God! I swear I am exploding over here. It's just you just can't see it. Oh my ham jeez, ham jeez, hammies. Oh my God! Why you always gotta sit? First, excellent job. That was five minutes. Um, so that was, one, a great hamstring and glute workout in five minutes. That was a great postural control workout in five minutes. Because, you know, that bell wants to launch you forward. Keeping it back, that's a great postural control. And we also got a fantastic cardio workout as well. All in five minutes. Yep. Are you guys ready for some uh, power yoga, also known as Turkish get-ups? Yes. Oh, I like Turkish get-ups. Right. So I'll demonstrate the Turkish get-up first. It's one of those things you have to see it multiple times until you get it because there's a lot of components to it. All Turkish get-ups start here in the side. You're almost in like the fetal position. So I'm here, I have both hands on the kettlebell and watch this, all I'm going to do, I am just going to roll up here. I'm gonna press the kettlebell up above with two hands. So I have my free hand now that's gonna come down outside of me to a 45 degree angle. This leg here is also going to come to a 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is this foot right here, this is where all my power is coming from. What I'm thinking right now is I'm going to try to use my heel to roll onto this elbow right here. So it's not a sit up, it is a roll. And this is the hardest part of the get up. So at this point, I am now going to go to the next phase of the get up. If you guys take a look at my right leg right now, I'm going to adjust that to allow me for my next transition point. I'm going to push through my palm. Now here, one thing I want to point out is that everything in my body is in line and straight. This next phase, I'm going to actually get up to allow my leg to sweep through. Now right here, take a look at the bell, my elbow, my shoulder, and my hand on the ground. They're probably in pretty close alignment. Right here, body like straight lines. I am, everyone's different at this phase, but I'm at about a 90 degree angle between my heel, my knee, and my palm on the ground. This is called the windmill phase. I'm now transitioning to the lunge. All that now gets reversed. Reverse lunge, I'm reversing the windmill. Me personally, I like to use my thigh as a guide to come back out with this hand. I'm back at a 90 degree angle, so I'm shifting my weight onto my down arm, kicking my leg through, sitting down, coming down to my elbow. So right here, most people want to flop down at this point. I encourage you to fight the flop I'm going to create a lot of tension here, and I'm gonna to try to resist this bell coming down as much as possible. Safety first, both hands on the bell, bring it down to the side, and roll over. That, that was a lot of cracking. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. fight the flop. Fight the flop. <laughs> <laughs> Now one thing here I want to point out, this is a really good position, looking at it from this angle, the bell is in line with her elbow, is in line with her shoulder, can you just put this trap down a little bit? Oh, no, no, but uh, oh. fight that, yep, is now in line with the shoulder and with the elbow. So we have a nice straight line right here. You want to maintain that alignment throughout the entire get up. All right, onto your arm, 
Good. Create space. Well done. Reverse it. Well done. You're halfway through. Congrats. <laughs> So take a look at the angles of my body right now. So right now, um, you know, there, you're gonna, you might vary a few degrees from here. My heel in line with my knee, knee in line with my palm. Who wants to give it a shot? We're just gonna practice a static hold. I got it. You go, Corey. Yeah, but we'll have to adjust you a little bit once you get up. Once we get up. We're gonna have to adjust you a lot. Okay, got this. We can draw imaginary lines. This is about to be 90 on the dot. Show us. <laughs> okay. Um, that's more of an obtuse angle. <laughs> and I can teach mathematics. I would not say that's a 90. 90 on the dot, Rob. All right, so I need to move my right so hand. First, can you stand here for a second? Yeah. This right, whole step, angle right wind here. Wind off this leg. Take this heel, move it over here. Okay. There we go. This knee needs, it needs to get to go back. back. Oh. Okay. Oh. This heel needs to line up with this knee. Right here. Okay. First thing I'd recommend a little. There you go. Yep. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I was much closer than Corey's for actually. Yeah. You well, know, I don't have too much to say there. Like my 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 look. So my one point of consideration, I would. I would move this foot in a little bit more and maybe this knee under your hips a little bit more. And consequently, this foot a little bit more. Okay, because now you have a good line here. Knee lined up with palm, knee lined up with heel. So to, to summarize with the get up, the body likes positions of stability. Position of stability happen to be in straight lines. At that particular phase in the get up, on your way up and, and on your way down, for most new people, that's where things get all convoluted and twisted. You have arms out here, knees back here, the bell shaking around. So just spending some time, you know, anybody at home watching this, if, even if you don't have a kettlebell, a really good drill is to take a very light, like a shoe, actually, and you'll be in that position and try to balance the shoe on top of your fist like that. That will be a surprisingly good workout just to work on those body mechanics. That's how I pr first learned to get up. So, wow. yeah, with a shoe. With a shoe. Like good, our thing, good thing you got new shoes. Lane, Lane eights. eights. That's right. Based on what you've seen here today. Oh, here we go. All right. I'd hate to be in this position. Oh, it's a great position Who for you. Would you say is more fit? Corey. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> How is Corey more fit? Did you see my Turkish getup? Uh, First off, we never ask we never ask people to justify their respect the man's opinion. That's fine. You can have this. One thing I observed is Corey was able to maintain a high level of power output even under fatigue during his swings. That was impressive. I think Thank we you. need a rematch. No, we don't. We don't. Cody, this was. Even good. for us that have used kettlebells before, like your level of expertise is, is awesome, man. I like we learned, beyond. we learned a lot of things about movements that we thought uh, we understood. So thank you.